Hi, I'm Mary, and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio, and this video is Dying With Matter, day number two. This will be a short video because it's really just a recap of what we did yesterday. And if you will remember, I was the student yesterday. I tried out for the first time a, a recipe for Dying With Matter that I really, really like. To remind you, it's where you simply soak the, um, the uh, what do you call this, the ground, <laughs> the ground matter root, uh, soak it overnight and then you take that sodden mass of root and the soaking liquid, you use that as the base for your dye bath, uh, you add, uh, what is it, for a pound of fiber, you add a teaspoon of citric acid at that point and your fiber, you let it simmer for 45 minutes at no higher than 160, ideally no lower than 140 degrees. And then you put in um, a teaspoon, again, if you have a pound of fiber, a teaspoon of calcium carbonate. And <laughs> that's our dog drinking in the background. We will carry on. Um, and you simmer for another 45 minutes. And what happens? Well, you get this remarkable color, which I'll show you in just a minute. But let me stress here that you want to make sure to put your ground matter root into a fine mesh bag or some sort of a porous fabric bag that will hold the matter root so it doesn't float all through the dye bath. So let me show you the good and the bad. Okay, this is the result of dyeing with the citric acid. It is a beautiful orange, wonderful fire orange. This is mohair. This is gray mohair. This is Peggy Agnew's uh, Merino Fleece. Her name is Faith. That I believe is Red Creek Farms. And this is, uh, what is this? Is this just Blue Face Lester or is it something else? Regardless, it's a wool top and look at that magnificent orange. Now that's the good. Here's the bad. The bad is matter root everywhere and I'm not really too unhappy about it because look at the big chunks they do shake out these are still damp so as they dry more and more of this root will drop off and then I will manually open it up and flick it out it's not um, an insolvable problem it's just an inconvenience okay so it will take time for me to get this out but I will because I really like this color and I really want to use it let me also say that if you're looking at this top and you notice variations in the color, uh, first of all, I like that. But secondly, I think matter is one of the dyes that's kind of prone to do that, okay? So I'm very happy with this and I recommend the citric acid recipe for my dyeing with matter. Um, but let me tell you this. You are going to have a lot of color left after you pull out your fibers from the first bath. And what that means is if you want to do a second bath, go for it. But let's say you end up with a blah color, okay? Because you can. Um, second baths, you can oftentimes end up with a color you're not 100% wild about. This was not a second bath of matter. This was a mistake of a first bath. But I, it really does look like a second bath. So what do I do with this color that does not speak to me at all? Well, what I can do is I can put it in a bath of cochineal. And if it's a first bath of cochineal, the chances are very likely you're gonna get something very close to this, okay? Because cochineal and matter love each other. In fact, if you were to you put this into a pot of a, of a first bath pot, of cochineal insect, you will get a red that will just scream at you. But I put this in a second bath, actually a weak second bath of cochineal insect, and this is what I got. Okay, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's perhaps still a little lighter than I would like, but heck, I'm getting closer to having a really workable color. So play around with your second baths. And for heaven's sakes, as long as the fiber is wet, which means the mordant is still active, you can over-dye any color you want with a second color. 
And that's where the fun begins. Just be sure to take notes so if possible you can duplicate your efforts should you want to in the future. All right, so what's on the agenda? Well, um, I'm not going to be at the dye pot for a short while. I will be back, at which time I uh, want to play around more with matter. And I also want to go back to cochineal and play around more with the cochineal insect. So I'm not done with dyeing. But um, I do want to tell you that while I'm gone, I will be beside the ocean and I want to play with salt water, which I've never done before. So I have a little tiny um, amount of, uh, of fiber that I will dye with cochineal. And I think it's um, the uh, Rubia tinctoria. This, remember, is the Rubia cordifolia. Uh, the Rubia tinctoria tends to go redder and so we'll see what happens when I use that particular matter root with salt water as the dye pot or as the dye bath. I will definitely post photos if not an outright video. Okay, see you soon and happy dyeing. Thank you.